Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining the Great Dynamics podcast again. My name is Ahmed Hassan, and for the people that are joining us for the first time, today I have, uh, as always, a very interesting guest. He's using an alias, so we will honor that. His name is Ray Jax. Ray Jax is an individual, but also a brand and a collective that collects intelligence, uh, or collects information, and publishes that online. I think what the best way to explain what Regex does is information collection and turning that into analysis 2.0. You're very active on, on Instagram, Twitter. I think on all platforms together, he has close to half a million followers. And um, so he's very influential. And somebody I look up to enormously. And, and then I want to get into his story today. Ray Jax, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Thank you, Ahmed. It's an honor to be on this podcast. It's, it's been, it's been a rough three years. I've been working on that, on that brand for some time. Thank mm. you for having me. I'm ready to answer any question you have. All right. So first question that comes into me, you know, what I always ask. How did you get started into this? What was your path to this craft and, and, and what was your background and how did you get to where you are today? I've started my career as security and intelligence. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been in the service for some time, four years. Through the years, I've learned a lot about gathering information and analyze, analyzing it. So I've put that in my knowledge and rage and tried to do my best to show the truth to everyone. I guide people to the truth. This is everything I do. I don't shift the truth to what I believe. My belief have nothing to do with what I say. It's all analysis and all information. So we started this brand or I started this brand in 2020 when the war started in Armenia and Azerbaijan, I used my knowledge in that I started to analyze the war day by day, as I do now in Ukraine and Russia. And I, I tried to find the truth in everything that's happening through politics and through war as they collide or intersect at, at every point. You alluded to it a little bit and forgive me if, if I'm prying, but I, I, I always want to know this and, and I think people listening are very interested in this. So when you say you started your career in security and intelligence, is that law enforcement, is that military, is that civilian government? No, it's a private sector. It's a okay. private sector. Mm -hmm. We started to work with information gathering for people, let's say, when I'm contacted by banks that needed information about people that want to take loans and how to gather information to tell them if they should give them a loan or not. And we helped a lot of governmental sectors to, to find ways to find people that are missing. We gather information that people don't actually tell to the government because they are afraid of being followed or having to get a lawyer. So we try to gather information from under the table, as we can say. We protect the people that give us the information. Okay. I think it's also important for people to understand where you do this because we haven't talked about what country we're talking about here, right? Yeah. Let's say it's in the Middle East. Okay. Good <laughs> enough. Good enough. It's, it's in Fair the enough. Middle East. A turbulent place in the Middle East. Yeah. I mean, even that yeah. doesn't narrow it the, down. The, there's, but... the, there's there's no place in the Middle East that's not turbulent, but yeah, <laughs> we can say that. All right. All right. So growing up, did you know that you were going to get into this field and, and, and was it a family? Well, to be honest, it's a way of living. It's All more right, explain. than, it, 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 yeah, it's, it's in my blood more than it's like something that I've learned. It's something that I've grew up with. It's a passion and it's something that I do on a daily basis. It's not the work for me. It's something that I read, as we say. So I don't think of it as a work or something that takes a lot of my time. It's my time. It's everything that 
in a way I live for. Gathering information, analyzing, and helping others. We don't do that to put people in jail or to, to but it, if it leads to put some people that are terrorists in jail, then we do that. And we've done that before. And that's for another day. All right. All right. So main reason, obviously I got, I came into touch with you is, is your work on, on social media and how you follow certain conflicts and, and give insights into this. Was that a natural extension of what you were doing and what you were interested in, or did you try different things, try different focus areas? How, how did that come about that you started to focus on, on conflict yeah. and, and understanding conflicts better? I used to study conflicts as a hobby. So like people like to get cards or get computer games or play or anything, or let's say post, post cards or something like that. It's, it's a passion. I used to follow wars and conflicts since I was a child. And I used to analyze it, like when would this fall or when will it happen and try to make analysis with it as I grew up, like I was nine years old. I used to follow wars that happened in Iraq or happened in Iran or happened in Serbia. I used to follow these day by day. So when things, when, when I had the time due to COVID sitting at home type, I tried to take that knowledge step. I always wanted to stay hidden under an alias for security reasons. So I, I shifted in a way to try to help people. So when I did Rage Ajax or what was first called War Age, it was during the war between Armenia and Azerbaijan. My main focus was to find the prisoners of war of both sides, try to find the people that were still missing, try to spot, to give the light to who's like been murdered or been taken hostage or, or is still missing. We tried to focus on that. I tried to focus on that mainly. I did not focus on who was winning the war or the war as much as who is being stepped on during that war? Like who is being taken hostage or who is being like he disappeared suddenly. So I tried to find a reason or to find a name or a face with, I did a lot of work during that war. We found a lot of people that were still seeing and that brought me forward to the Ajax to, to, to widen the scope. I've been attacked as an account several times. I've lost a lot of accounts due to that. I've not liked on, on, on any of the platforms, unfortunately, because I say the truth. I show the truth. It's not to show as blood or gore. No, we don't do that. If it's possible, I do that on my websites. I do investigations. Like if it's war crimes, I follow war crimes. I tried to, to shed a light on war crimes. And that was my main goal at first. Then everything came together. I did the brand. We, I did the, the whole vision of the logo as a, as a news radar for everywhere. I'm not focused on some place only. Now the light is shed on Ukraine. I post about Ethiopia. I try to know more about things that are happening in Afghanistan and some stuff that are happening in the USA. And I try to analyze it. So it's not an easy job, but it's a passion. It's not a job for me. I cannot help but think, and obviously we know each other outside of this, but what does that do to you? If anything, right, that from a young age, you've been following conflicts and obviously, as we said, you know, you're from a very turbulent place in the world. How does that shape you? Does that, does that stick with you? Is that, is there, is there a conversation there of keeping your mental health and how, how do you deal with that? Okay. I've seen a lot of gore and the graphic pictures and graphic videos, especially during the recent wars. 
while trying to find missing people. I try not to get attached to the people that I try, I like, I focus on the, on the goal, not on what I'm seeing. I try to shift my mind from my heart, from how I feel about that, because I, I try to have several personalities in that. I shift my personality in a way that I can take everything I can see without getting attached to the things that I see. So I, I, I don't know how to say it. It doesn't mean that I don't feel that anger or that hatred or that sadness or that, or the thing that you see from the war, but I have a way to shift my mental state from the things that I feel for that person. I don't know how I was able to do that because a lot of people I know like stopped after one month of seeing what I see. I've been doing that for tens of, for 10 years now and I, okay. Like I, I train my body, I train my mind and I try to focus on the good sides of the things because if I stop then I've lost and me losing is not, is not, is never an answer to me. I go to the yeah. extreme side. Fair enough. I'm trying to give you an answer for you, a question that's actually very hard and I really don't I have an answer for how yeah. I, I've been asked that question several times. I really, I really shift. I have multiple personalities to shift my mind. And the things I feel. <laughs> okay. I don't know if that's healthy, but I mean, if, if that's a way for you to deal with it, fine. Like, I think the first question, I don't want to go too, too long on to this, you know, but is there a chance that you become desensitized or you have to become desensitized to all of this craziness? When you're, when you're viewing these the the goal you have to be desensitized. You have to. You can't. You can't feel. If you do that, you'll stop in the second day. You'll stop. The only way to do it is like not to feel anything, not to think of the person or the pain that he's been through, and try to show the people the truth. Because if I think of that person, I will not be able to show his truth or his story. I will stop there. I will look at the person, I will see his pain, and I will delete rage, and I go home, and that's all. So yeah, I, I find a way not to go in a way that's sensitive. I go in a way that I have to show this man's truth, or this woman's truth. I have to go all the way, all the way. If my account gets deleted, I'll do another one. If the other one gets deleted, I post it on my website. If my website gets deleted, I, I don't know what I do. I there, but I have to show the truth. To to conceptualize it right, and and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Please let me know. So what you're saying is, you have to turn off your humanity for a bit, so you can help their humanity. Yes. Yes, yes, this is, I don't know how it's done or how I've, how I've been able to do it. Maybe I'll break someday. Like I lose my mind someday. I don't know. Please. I'm, I'm being go honest. Say that. Let's hope not. <laughs> I'm being on, no, I, I know it, yeah. but I'm being honest. It's a way <laughs> that's if I have a purpose and this is the purpose, my purpose is not to feel for this person, this person, his parents, his family will feel for him. I have to tell the truth for this person. His parents would cry for him, but I should have a name for this person. Should have a title, how he died and what was his purpose of living. If I stop at stage one and look at his body and say, I can't deal with that and leave, then what have I, why did I look at the first place? I have a purpose to. My purpose is to show, to tell the story, how and why. Because if I stop at stage one, I've done nothing. I've just hurt myself 
and hurt the, yeah. the family of this person. Yeah. So I find this fascinating. We have never really talked about this, but the, from the people that you identified in the, in the Azerbaijan Armenia conflict, did you hear from their families or what was their responses or did you get any feedback for the work that you've done? I've got some feedback. I've saved some lives. We've saved some people that were kidnapped. We've done some work that I don't want to talk about it now because I think it's just bragging or saying that I'm good. I don't really want to go there. But I think that I've reached a place that I've fulfilled some of the people's requests. I've saved some lives. I've shed light on people that have been taken and they have returned home because I was able to set a team up and talk about them every day. How I did now with the Ukrainian war and I number the days that have been through the war, like today is 245 days of the war. When people were missing, I used to say that this person has been missing for 100 days. He has been through one, two, three. Please help us save him. Please, uh, every day, every day. And every day I, I add a number. And every day I show a picture. And every day, I, until like I get a request, like, how can we help you? And I, tell, I don't want help. Just contact this person. Tell us that he's a liar. He is well fed. He is he has a coat or he's not cold. I don't I don't want anything more. I don't want to go into politics like get him out or free him. I I did that. We did that. We freed a few prisoners that no one knew about. Some prisoners were thought to be dead, and we found them that are still alive, and we did that. That's what. In a way, I don't want to go into the political side. I always stay in the humane side, like, let's find this person. Let's find this person. Every day, every day, every day. Until, like, one day, someone replies to us, I'll help you. Okay, how? I have someone that can contact this person. We contacted this person, and we found them. And if they are, and now they are at home with their families, finally. So I did that for a year. and. When everyone like backed down and I was still alone ho holding up, we still have more and like everyone left. I tried to stay. I tried to help as much as I can, but like, I don't know why, like everyone gave up and I guess everyone's humanity took control. Like everyone, like we were fed up. We can't look at pictures anymore. I was like, we can do more. We can do more. But. Like everyone got tired. Everyone like started, a lot of people I know started taking meds to sleep. So I stopped and I shifted and got more work to do. And then the war started in the Ukraine and the Russia. And this is how things are going now. And I'm ready to do it again. I have no regrets. I have no problem going and trying to find the truth for people that are still missing. Fantastic. I really admire that in a world where a lot of accounts and people share things for the dopamine hit of getting likes and shares and right to have, to have that goal, I think is admirable. You, you said very humbly, I don't want to brag. I don't think. It's bragging. I think it's inspiring. You know, I think people listening to this are hearing this and, I'll, and, and they're hearing, hey, this guy did it. Why can I not do it? Right. And, and I think if we can mobilize more people, more eyeballs, you know, and obviously, you know, responsibly, then there should be a way for us to, to help more people. Right. And so I, in, in those kind of ways, I say, don't see it as bragging, you know, see it as inspiration. The only way to do that is just not to look at the number of followers, the number of likes. If you get your account deleted, don't stop. I've just lost an account on Instagram that had 30 or 40 K. I've lost a Twitter account that had a hundred K. I rebuilt because I have a purpose. My purpose 
if I had the purpose just to have accounts, you know that I can get the followers without doing any of that. But what do I? What, why do I need an account just to show pictures of guns and pictures of tanks moving? I can watch movies or go to the CNN and do that. My purpose is not to be like everyone. It's not a social media. I don't wanna. I don't want my purpose to be the number of followers. Take the accounts, delete them. I if I'm attacked, then I'm doing the correct thing. I don't know why I lost my accounts. I don't even post gone. I have nothing that could be against any rules. But I, my accounts get deleted. So, because my accounts are deleted, this is a purpose that, whoa, I'm doing the correct thing. I'm being attacked by the high places now. I, you know what? And this is perfectly when you said this, something like, I know there's a lot of people listening to this. And if you can help anybody who's listening to this for, for Raytex to get his accounts back, and if you know a way to do that, please reach out to us. And so we can help out somebody that's trying to help others. That was like a little pr public service announcement in between. Apologies, Rajax. No, no. In the end, social media is a double-ended noise. You can go an extreme pornographics or go an extreme to go and that. If you don't have a purpose for it, if you just want to show your car, or show your girlfriend, or show you can you can do that at home. What do you need to show everyone? It's not something that's that's special. If you want to brag about things you can buy, okay. You know, Musk bought Twitter. He bought he he paid fifty k fifty billion dollars for that. He could have built one, and without buying it, but he wanted to brag that like, I can buy it. His purpose was to brag that like, I can buy anything, but. With everything that's around us, I don't really care how much money you have. You can't buy me. You can't buy my brand. You can delete my brand. You can do whatever you want to attack my brand. But I'm not for sale. And my opinion is not for sale. I'll say it. If it's against my will or if it, if I'm, my way of living is different. Even in my personal life, my life is in danger. So. I won't shift and I won't change how I do my stuff. If it's death in the end, then I've died for a purpose. People yeah. die for nothing. I mean, that's a bar right there. I think, yeah, it's a very powerful statement you make there. And I think we will leave it for another episode. Yeah. What you mentioned, why your life is in danger. And, and I think people listening to this are saying to themselves, like, what is he talking about? But uh, yeah, obviously we talked about this before and you told me, you know, there will be a time and place to talk more about that. That time and place is not, is not there yet. So I will respect you on that. I want to shift back to, to the actual work, to the, to the mechanics of, of what you're doing. Right. So on what platforms are you active? I'm active on. Instagram, Twitter, Telegram, Facebook, website, and some other platforms that like Jitter or something. Mm -hmm. They are small, small platforms. But yeah, I'm active on many, many platforms. I try to, I try to have a backup for what I do. Because like, if I lose an account here, I have another account so that I can also rebuild. Because as I said, I don't know why, but I've attacked by the high places, not from people <laughs> that report normal reports. Like I got deleted without an email, without a way to appeal that. So like, like delete and that's it. So it's one click, like they go and talk to someone that's works at Instagram and they go like, go into the Ajax, delete, that's it. Send them an email. Nope. Don't give him away and back. Just delete his account. So it's happened to many platforms to me. So 
I've got I've gotten used to it. I've gotten used to it. So uh, yeah. What um, is your favorite platform? My favorite platform is my favorite platform is Twitter. Why? Because it's easier to be deleted and easier to show to show people the truth. Because like Instagram you need to show the people the truth. Like you have to make a video and explain the video and explain if, it, if it's not like a good background in the video and if it doesn't have red and green in the video, they won't look. And you have to put some, I don't know, women maybe in the video, but in, on Twitter, you can like uh, test and everyone like, well, that's what he's testing, <laughs> you know, like you can test and whoa, is he testing a nuclear bomb now? <laughs> what, what is he testing? <laughs> so you're saying, on on places like Instagram, for example, you have to look at styling and what fonts and all the kind of stuff. But Twitter is straightforward. Yes. Yeah, you can now. Now I can go like on Twitter and say like, it's Putin has entered the toilet, and you get like fifteen thousand replies. But on Instagram, you have to show him. <laughs> like you have to take a good picture of him. Go like, <laughs> so that's harder. <laughs> for... <laughs> okay, it's better. Uh, you know, Twitter is easier to spread fake news. To be honest, I'm not saying that it's the best platform for truth, but easier to show the, to, to, to guide people there. Like if it's something like, let's say one, like when there's missiles coming into Kiev or missiles moving from Russia or like caliber missiles getting ready to be launched. I post on my Twitter account, like get ready, go to shelter. Kiev could, could be under attack. I get like a hundred thousand views or three tweets at that moment while going to Instagram. If I don't so show the missile by being fired and it's already there, no one would care. So I try to save as much lives by telling people to go to shelter rather than showing them to go to shelter. So it's faster for me to tell people like, please go. Go to a bunker. It's this place could be under attack. This is this is why it's easier for me. Even Telegram is fast, but Telegram has a lot of accounts that are Russian or not. And it's but for me, yeah, Twitter is the best to spread fast news that could save lives. Uh, Telegram, you mentioned. What are the downsides with Telegram? Obviously, Telegram has exploded. With the war in Ukraine and, and Russia, since it's a it's a Russian chat app. Yeah, what's what's your opinion? Not just on the the downsides that you mentioned, but as a as a communication tool. To be honest, the best tool now, as in servers and speed, and also sharing, is Telegram. It's an amazing, an amazing social media platform. It's a mixture of Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and all those. It's it's one big platform. It's only downside is like it's just people just like when there's a war they go and or they when there's something. It's not something that you daily basis, like on a minute basis. So it's more like going into Wikipedia or going into Google to to search something that's specific. So it's more of a search network than it's going into social media network. It shifted in a way that it it had, it wanted to be like Twitter, but it ended up to be like Google search for for war stuff. Like you can find the gore and the cutting and the killing and everything. So it's it's unlimited, to be honest. But it also limited itself by that unlimited stuff. It shifted in a way like it's just for Ukraine and Russian war. Like it's it should be like it, from Telegram to war network. They should call it like a war network or something. I mean, I, I think from from my perspective and just generally from Great Dynamics and 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 the research that we do, our team and and the work that we engage in. Telegram has been for years, not, not just now, you know, it's been for years a godsend. And I think for some people that if you are in a certain area of expertise, like let's say like Russian speaking world and 
Ukraine and Central Asia, obviously Telegram is the number one, you know, but, but then, you know, if you want to follow what's happening in Myanmar, right, uh, which not enough people are talking about, you can find enough on Facebook or Myanmar, yes. right? So there is, there is platforms of choice for different cultures and, and sensibilities, I guess, uh, to do that. I, I really like Telegram. I, I've been learning Russian to, to, to read comments and, 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 and yeah. understand more deeper. I found such interesting topics that nobody else is talking about in my niche or, or what I'm interested in. So I, I heavily use Telegram, but obviously I understand yeah. that there are problems with it. I haven't, I haven't used Telegram also. I'm, I'm just saying like what you said about Myanmar. You can't find news on Twitter that on a daily basis, which you can't find on Telegram. This is what the white, the, the tele, Instagram is limited to pictures. Twitter is faster for news, written news or something that you want to talk about, like in a few words or a few sentences. While Telegram, it shifted in a way to be a search engine for words and for pictures or for knowledge or for something that you can't find on any other platform, like war crimes. I couldn't find, without Telegram, I wouldn't have found what I wanted. Telegram was a golden chest for me. Like I was able to find a lot of people that were missing because of Telegram. Because if you post that on Twitter, you get suspended on day one. So this is why Telegram is more of a search engine now than a social media platform. Oh, absolutely. I agree. I, if you go into the, if you go into all the channels you follow and then you go to media, you can search within the media and then you can find things. Yes. Right, that, which is, which is crazy. You can write in Russian, whatever you want, and you'll find it or in Armenian yeah. or in any other language. This is, mm -hmm. it's an, it's a big open search engine that you can download any video you want. You can do your research in it. So I think that calling it a social media network is downgrading for Telegram. I, I, hear, I hear what you say. And I think, I mean, if you're, uh, if you're in geopolitical research or security or military, obviously you're on Telegram. I mean, if you're not, and you're listening to this, start now. I mean, you're behind the curve, yes. right? And I think a lot of people on Twitter translate what they find on, on Telegram and, 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 and put that out there. And then the people from Instagram grab it from Twitter and then put their twist on it. Right. And so. It depends on who you are and what you like and how you consume information. I think there's always a platform for you. What's next for, for Ragex? Well, the sky is our limit, as I can say. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I, I'm trying to, to have the platform has, the Ajax has reached a place that I can say the truth and I can share it with a lot of people. It led me to meet you, and that's an amazing, an amazing thing that happened. We have a lot of contacts now from around the world. We are trying to help as much as we can. We are building the website to reach where we can like have a flexible way of moving. Like if they delete us from any place, we'll have the website and ready to share. I really don't have an end game for the Ajax. It's an ongoing platform that I want to work on. I will shift it as things go, because as I said, I will not, and that's final, I will not be sponsored by anyone and no one will tell me what to say. So as much as I can go from my own for my own spending and do that and show the truth, I'll go. If I fall, then that's, that's an end game for me and for the Ajax. So as long as I'm standing up and being able to work, then I'll go to the end. Love that. I think we, we've talked about this, me and you have talked about this before. I have to put a little caveat to what you said there. 
we are working on something together that, that potentially could be like business value, but that wouldn't interfere with, with your message and, and, and what you have to say, because I, I, in a sea of people saying same things and they're parroting and echoing each other, it's very refreshing to see somebody like you and, and what you've been doing and, and I think it's mind boggling that you've done most of it, if not almost everything by yourself, which is, I mean, it's a testament to, to where, to like the, 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 the statement that you've heard, the meme, the internet remains undefeated. I mean, we can see that in how it has opened doors for people around the world. And that's one thing I love about all these platforms. The amount of interesting people that I've been able to meet without actually meeting them, right? Yes. And the amount of people that I've been able to communicate with, that I've been able to touch in a way, or, or they touch me in a way whereby it's impactful. And I think you're doing an, an awesome, awesome job on that. And, and, and I want to absolutely commend you. Normally we have people here on this podcast. You know, all kinds of experts, which you are, but I think you have elevated what you've been doing in your daily life to reach an audience that most people can only dream about reaching, right? Because a lot of researchers are listening to this and saying to themselves, well, I write a paper and this is something we talked about in the last podcast. I write a paper and maybe a thousand people, if they read it, that I'm happy, right? Yeah. Where when you said something on, on, on Twitter, it's possible, like, I mean, we talked about crazy numbers yesterday, but it's possible that a hundred thousand people that week, yes. if not more, you know, communicate with that. So that's immense. My Instagram account has reached around 1,500,000 people. My Twitter account in a month has reached around 140 million people. That's those numbers are shift as for the events that happened, but uh -huh. I'm, I'm talking about the months that peaked. Uh -huh. So we covered the, uh, the Chinese Taiwan issue that happened two months ago. We had a big number of people, a lot, huge number of people that contacted with us from China and from Taiwan. We had to show the truth. We knew that nothing was going to happen. We said that nothing's going to happen. No one's going to go into a war now. Not until they see what will happen in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine. Economically, no one can, no one can go into a war knowing that sanctions will be on China, which is the, the number one provider for the U.S. and for Europe. And Taiwan is the number one chip and computer experts that live there. So no one will allow it. A situation to go to a war, they would try to stabilize it. And this is what we said, like, don't go into conclusions. This is only flexing the muscles. They are just flexing the muscles around. They will not shoot down any planes. No one will go into that because both parties, if it's Taiwan or China, can't handle the economics of that. China has 2 billion people to feed. It's not something that's easy. It's not something that you can handle on a daily basis. It needs, it needs, a, it needs a lot of strategy. So it's flexing the muscles. That's it. So, and also what's happened in, in, China, in Russia and Ukraine, like it, it showed the world that numbers don't mean a thing. If you have a billion people that's going to go to war, if you don't have if you don't have the, the, the might to fight and you are being resisted by good, by people that want to resist you and have nothing to fear, you can go, you can go in with the hundreds of millions of people. It will change nothing. The resistance will stay. So this changed and shifted a lot of minds. And now wars are different. The way of war is different. If you want to talk about this on this podcast, we can. If you want to shift it to another time, I'm ready. But I just want to say one thing. 
social media has showed that wars can be lost through social media. And this is what happened. We knew every tank that entered Ukraine a day before, and we pinpointed them, and they were destroyed through social media and OSINT. And if someone comes and tell you, no, it was intelligence and stuff, no more. OSINT changed the world. The people that sit on their computers and work and do the strategic analysis like we do and you do, shifted wars. And I can pin it and say that this war was lost. I'm not talking about military loss. It was lost through social media on the day they entered the war. Because they entered in a way that we're going to take Ukraine in three days. But you showed us where the tanks are coming from. This is not how you go to war. Where's the element of surprise? So you bet on fear. Russia bet on fear to show us this huge entrance. And we knew where they were coming from. And the Ukrainians hit them. But this is the difference. They, they entered through fear. We entered through intelligence and information. Information one. If a young person wants to get into what you're doing, wants to build a platform like Rajax, what would you tell them today? First of all, if you're entering it for the money, go work. Don't go on that. Don't this platform. Find something to work by, make a living, and do this as a secondary job. Get the knowledge first. Don't take the knowledge of others and copy it. It doesn't work this way. A lot of knowledge is there. A lot of information is there. If you're going to go copy-paste, it's just fooling yourself. Because you're not going to go anywhere. Because it's one, one step at a time to nowhere. But if your passion and you want to have that as an analysis and go someplace, you have to have the money for it first. You can't come in broke and say, I'm going to make a platform that's going to make me money. You have to shed blood and money on this and build it step by step. And then maybe, maybe you'll sell the brand or make uh, or sponsor people or sponsor you, then that's another stage. But at first, if you're going to make a way of living from this, no, go, go get a job, go work, and then make this as a secondary job or a hobby. Thank you for that. I think a lot of people need to hear that. My second question, which is more about, you know, cultural recommendations. What are you reading at the moment? What are you watching? It doesn't have to be necessarily in our field or, you know, what we do on a daily basis. Well, well, I'm just, I'm reading something that I'm going to be posting soon about Finland's underground city. I'm really interested in that. It's a nuclear bunker, to be honest, but it's amazing how a country sold so much to the future that they prepared themselves. And, and then trying to analyze stuff that how I want to shift my product or my name more into a professional and go head to head with professional people more because I, I don't like I've broken. I'm not going to say broken. I've defeated mainly every other small OSINT accounts that wanted to defeat our account. And now we're like, we're going a step further. We're trying to go a step further so that we don't stay in a statical situation. As for watching stuff, we've watched them all during COVID, I guess. <laughs> we're, out, we're out of stuff to watch and read. But <laughs> yeah, I read. <laughs> I don't have a niche to read. I read everything. I read yeah. Arabic news. I read English news. I go to the Ethiopian news. I go to the news in Sudan. I follow the Egyptian, Ethiopian situation to the dam, which I think it's, it's done now. No, no one can do anything about it anymore. No one can destroy the dam or do it. It's, it's done. Like every threat that has been set has gone down the rubbish pan. So 
Yeah, I follow every news outlet that I can during my time of being awake. All right. On the Finland one, I can recommend you, Sweden has a similar system, which kind of was abandoned, I think, in the early 90s, but, but the infrastructure is there. They have a very similar infrastructure. But then again, Finland had a war yes. twice with, with Russia. So that kind of like teach you lessons, right? So, uh, it's the thing, the good thing that happened is that Finland understood the lesson. Ukraine did it. I know where you want to go with this, but let's keep exploring. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, this yeah. is for another time. This is yeah, for, for another, another time. time. This is for another time. Ray Jax, thank you so much, man. I, I, I really enjoyed, I always enjoy talking to you and I feel like I always learn a lot. And I think some people will listen to this and say brutal honesty and, and, and no, no, no pulling punches, no, no trying to be nuanced. And I, and I, I think it's refreshing and, and I think you're doing amazing work. We're going to share all your platforms on the show notes. People want to find you. you. They, they, they can find you. Any last remarks that you have? The only thing that I want to say is if you can say the truth, if you're not honest to yourself. Well, and if you can tell the people the truth and be honest to them of what's really happening or, or what I think it's my knowledge in the end, you can believe me or not. It's, it's up yeah. to you. So I can't be honest if I'm not honest to myself. So that's why I don't have, although I'm on gray dynamics, I don't have a gray side. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Th that was, th thank that was you. a little bit of. There was a little bit of a punch towards us, but oh, I will take no, it. No, I'm joking. No. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> it, uh, it's never a punch. It's not that. Being on the gray side, it's an amazing, it's an amazing way to have both sides. And we show both sides. But when yeah. I say my opinion, that's different. But when I'm trying to tell people the truth or to show people, the, I show them the both, both sides. Which somewhat, sometimes yeah. it's great, or most of the times it's great. But what yeah. I'm telling my story or my opinion, then that's different. Yeah. One last question, because this is something yes. that came up to me. <laughs> okay. Do you feel that, do you feel you are a journalist? Do I feel like I'm a journalist? No. I think journalism is just telling the story. I'm more of an analyst. I analyze what I do. I sometimes, I sometimes do journalism, like sh sharing the stuff or something that's happening now, or that uh, st uh, minimal stuff that don't need the analyst and uh, the analyst side. Yeah, I'm, I'm a journalist or a news or a website journalist or something like that. But most of the time, I believe I'm an analyst on my accounts. No, I ask that because of your, your stance on, on how you communicate and, and your, your loyalty to the truth. I'm not saying that as analysts, we don't have that, but as you said, you know, it's a, it's a much more nuanced, much more grayer point. And I want to say this too, for people that don't know, and I think a lot of people don't know this, but the reason why we call the company Great Dynamics was not necessarily the way we conduct ourselves, but it's the way the world is, right? So yes. we look at the dynamics, the movements, the, the interactions, the conflicts that happen within that gray area. And that's the gray physical area in the outside world and in the information world, but also the gray area inside your head, and, uh, right? Yes. So, so that's, that's how, the, how the name was, was conceived, and I, I'd say that. And I believe that the name is amazing. To be honest. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. I, I, I love how you do the work and that's mainly how we connected. Like mm -hmm. you, if, if like you liked uh, my work and I liked how you work. So this came into the gray zone, to be honest. So, <laughs> so now we are on the gray grounds. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, sometimes a lot of times in life. To move on, you have to be on the Bay Area mm. to see both sides. Mm -hmm. 
seeing both sides is the best way to analyze. So you have to be on the gray area to see the both sides. And I believe, and I believe a gray area and analysis is great. But on a personal opinion, I can't do that. Oh, of course not. There's values and other things that, that play a role within how we see the world, of course. And I, I, I second that. I don't completely agree. I'll be honest with you, but I think that's just a manner of how we see, it, how we say it and not how we think. I think values wise, we, we align pretty well. I want to, I want to thank you so much for, for being on. And it was an absolute pleasure speaking to you and, and understanding a little bit more about, you know, what you're about and, and the man behind the brand and the name. And, uh, and I think it will be uh, eye opening for a lot of people listening that, that know your work, but maybe not know you, you know, and, and I think uh, hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll get more followers and, and, and more people engaging with your work, because I think it's important work that you do. And every chance I get, you know, I champion people that, that I think that are doing great jobs and, and I'm definitely going to have you back on because there's a lot of things that we can unpack and topics that we can talk about and that we can delve into. First of all, we have unlimited information to share and yeah. that needs a lot of time. I want to thank you, Ahmed, for everything. I want to thank you. It's an honor to be on Great Dynamics. It's really, it's really an amazing experience. It's my first podcast, to be honest. I've never talked to anyone or showed my face to anyone. And that's a very, very nice step forward. Thank you very much for having me. And I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as obviously, I, I, I echo that to you too. And for everybody listening, you know, again, thank you guys. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you. And if you want to find what more of Rejax's work and, and, and where, where he is active and where he hides or not hide, we will share that as much as we can on, on the show notes. And I'll see you guys or speak to you guys next week.